Hello and welcome to a new interview from MinMax. I'm Ben Hansen and MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends getting better. Today's interview is about a tabletop game called Dust Biters, but it's also about the transition from working on video games to then working on tabletop games. So we're happy to be joined by Jan, who formerly was half of Lambeer, worked on Minute, Nuclear Throne, Ridiculous Fishing, Luftrausers, Super Crate Box, and Robbie Frazier, who worked on Genital Jousting, Broforce. Also, we should mention Terry Vellman, who's the artist on Dust Biters, who wasn't able to be here today. But this is about their journey in creating Dust Biters, a two-player tabletop game, which, full transparency, we did promote on the MinMax Show podcast, thanks to iM8Bit, who's involved with it, but this interview is not connected to that. Um, this is genuinely my favorite two-player tabletop game. I've been having a blast with this. The game's going to be available for sale on uh, Black Friday, so you can pick it up if you're looking for a good two-player game over the holidays. And we should let you know that if you enjoy this interview, you can always subscribe to MinMax's YouTube channel. We have the MinMax Show, which is our main podcast, a bunch of other interviews as well. And if you support MinMax on Patreon, not only do you help support this type of content, but you can unlock the podcast version of this interview, all of our other interviews, The Deepest Dive, which is our huge community game club discussions, all that fun stuff. So we'd appreciate it if you went to patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's and found the tier that's right for you. But without further ado, here's the team from Dust Biters. Jan and Robbie, welcome to MinMax. Hello, Ooh. thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Dust Biters. Uh, I think at this point it is my favorite two-player game. It is so good. So thank you for your hard work on this thing. Thank uh, you so thank much. You. That's that is great to hear. Nice to hear. Yeah, what's your history of this collaboration here? Um, so Robbie and I were on a, a road trip in 2016 with some amazing uh, folks in Mozambique. It was really beautiful, mind-blowing trip. And during the day, we would just explore the country and, and enjoy it. And at night, we would sit and play card games and board games. And I think being game designers, both of us, we just got the itch to make something. And we, we had this idea very much inspired by the road trip and by dirt roads and just that feeling of, of driving to make something like that. Um, very Mad Max inspired, and we just started scribbling on bits of paper. We, I think, played the the first game of, you know, of Dust Spiders back then when it was still broken and terrible, and and with way too much filler and weird weird features. But that's where it all originated, um, and we shared it with people, and they liked it. So we're like, okay, we're onto something. You know, we need to find an artist. That's when we reached out to Terry Velman who is an amazing, you know, also game designer, also artist. And he had mentioned to us at some point, like, hey, if you ever want to do a card game, just reach out. So we did. And I think that is kind of the, the, the origin story. Yeah. I mean, Robbie, was it as clear as like, okay, we're so inspired by these dirt roads and driving in a caravan. This needs to be a game. Or is it more, it'd be kind of fun to do a tabletop game. Maybe this is a theme that works. Yeah, I, I think JW had the idea for the theme initially. We we made like a couple of, of games on the trip before, um, just like little nonsense things. And I think that's kind of like maybe maybe just what game designers do if they go on a road trip without their laptops. Um, but yeah, JW, I remember, came and said, uh, let's make this like Mad Max game. Yeah. Um, did yeah, you, and I think you you had spoken to Terry beforehand, and maybe had the like idea of a card game in mind because he'd sent that message saying like, "Hey, if you ever want to work." So, yeah, I, I'm curious. Like, there's it's such a beautifully simple game, uh, you know, complex enough. But I think there's some some real incredible design happening here. And I'm curious, like, for the other games you were playing on that trip and this big epiphany trip, as it's going to be uh, the legend foretells. But like, did you have thoughts on like just general card games and tabletop design and wanting to shift it more towards a simpler direction? Or was there any like high level thing of, you know, I think the tabletop space needs more of this? I think we'd been playing a lot of uh, a game called Time Barons by John Perry, um, which has a similar kind of turn structure. So I, I was definitely inspired by that. And I, we did bring a copy along on the trip as well. Um, of that has kind of like the three actions to spend in different ways. So mechanically, that was the original inspiration, I think. And then uh, after that, I think we just realized quite early on that like the more we removed from the game, the like better it got and the more like focused it felt. Um, so that yeah. was kind of the design style we went ahead with. 
I remember the first version that I kind of wrote down had like landscape cards and different things happening and every turn there would be something and, and one of those things was the dust storm like oh now there's a dust storm and the card at the back dies or something oh interesting and Robbie was like no you know this is this is bad this is not fun let's streamline it only cards and I think that has been kind of our mantra designing this game like the cards are everything they're your not just your your units right but they're your health they're your abilities they're you know how far along the game is um so i think that was kind of an yeah the moment where, where it all clicked together and and like you said i think it might just be what game designers do when when they're bored is is make games and honestly I, i've made probably dozens of of tabletop games in my life and they were all really bad and maybe with dust spiders we we were just lucky right or we had the right right people together um and it was just one of those things where it's like, yeah, this 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 works. I think yeah. hopefully the game catches on in a big way because it is so nice in like the the preview copy that I have just for like bringing to a restaurant, bringing to a brewery. The fact that it's all just those cards. How many cards is it total? 21. 21. Yeah, 21 cards. It's just a piece of cake. It's portable. You don't have to sit at a brewery with some elaborate thing and it takes forever to set up. It's just beautiful. Just put it in your pocket and go. It's the best. Uh, but like, I'm curious about just the design process. Does it feel like, I don't know how many other video game designers have tried to take the leap. Can you think of any other examples of getting into tabletop stuff? Um, I'm sure there are yeah. a bunch, but off the yeah, top of my I, head. I mean, every, every game designer I know is definitely like, you know, played around at the very least with, with board games and things. I don't know if people have ever kind of, I don't know a lot of people who've made like a full jump to making a commercial game, but uh, it makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways, like board game design is like the, the truest form of game design, right? It's just like rules directly into play. So, you know, it's all it the same. It was great. Like to fix a bug, you just take a Sharpie and you like, okay, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the other thing. card in half, you know, write a new one. It's been really it lovely. so much um, easier to implement changes. <laughs> I, I did. I do think we we brought a lot of um, you know video game sensibilities into the tabletop space in that it's very fast paced. It's very action heavy, which is what a lot of the games we work on are are like as well. But also, when you make video games, you you learn this lesson: like players do not read. They don't read. If you write write text somewhere in a game, they're gonna ignore it. They're just gonna run past it. Absolutely. And, you know, try to whatever, try to figure it out themselves and. I think we kind of came into the this space with that mentality where it's like, okay, we don't want a game that takes two hours to explain. We don't want a game that takes four hours to play. You should be able to, while tipsy, explain this to a friend in five minutes and then play a game. And 15 minutes later, everybody gets it and you can just do another one, do another one. I think we kind of brought that mentality into it. And, um, you know, it's it's two pages of, of rules in a, in a tiny booklet pretty right, much. And right. I think... That, that that's like i don't know that that's been really great I'm, I'm very proud of that in a way yeah yeah i th i think the the small kind of uh like factor form factor of it was definitely a, a reaction to kind of board game experiences we've had where like you go to play a board game and then it takes like an hour to explain the rules and then two hours to play and then at the end of it you're like Okay, if we ever get together with these like four people again, right? This might be a fun, this might be a fun time, yeah. you know, because now we know what's <laughs> happening. So we wanted something that was super quick to learn, super quick to play, and you know, you could play it just like in a bar or like, you know, in the train, whatever, whenever you have a moment. Um, yeah, you know, or or at one of those like if that's your your thing at that board game party, but like while you're in between games, something like that. You know? While someone is explaining the rules for another game. <laughs> yes, exactly. Crank out three to four Dust Spiders games, you're good to go. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because I'd imagine if there are, and please, people in the comments can definitely uh, correct me along the way for other video game designers that have tried to dabble in tabletop design, but I'd imagine a lot of designers, video game designers, if they're moving to the tabletop realm, will want to take advantage of what tabletop does best, which is like, okay, let's layer in systems, let's layer in rules, let's slow things down, because people are more patient, I think, in general tabletop games, that community, they compare to the video game community. But that's why I think it's really I didn't, smart. I didn't know that, but it's totally true. It's like, in hindsight, if I had known, you know, Dust Spiders might have been a worse game. 
<laughs> Save it for the expansions. Make those bad yeah. and slow and complicated. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. We've got the, the board game gamers expansion that has like 25 different types of tokens <laughs> and like two hour glasses. Yeah. 20 sided dice. <laughs> So this is, I mean, I'd imagine ideally supposed to kind of be a fun side project for y'all. Is that the way you saw it? Is video game design is your main priority? Then this is the, the fun side project. And like, was it fun then? Or did it end up secretly being stressful as well? No, I think I, this I, is one of the least stressful things I've ever made, to be oh, honest. Oh, good. That's awesome. It's the only game I've ever shipped on time. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. But, but I, I think from the start, uh, we also decided like this should be stress free, this should be fun. Um, and, you know, we all, all three of us live on different continents, right? Yeah. Like I, I'm in the Netherlands, Robbie is in South Africa, Terry's in Brazil. And, uh, you know, whenever we would occasionally accidentally, you know, bump into each other at a, at a games conference or something, we, we would play some games and kind of continue that. So we always said, we're going to take our time, you know, um, we're not going to rush it. We're, we all have our other projects. Those are more important, but let's get this done very slowly. So it took us like five years, I think, but because of that, it wasn't stressful. And in the end, we realized, okay, we probably need to do like a, a Kickstarter for this but we don't want to deal with the stress of manufacturing and everything. So we teamed up with I Made Bit, which has been really great. Um, so we have kind of professionals who know how to make something physical and ship it and get it to people um, because that's something we, we had zero experience with. And I think that really helped reduce the stress factor. Like if if we hadn't had a, had a partner like that, then we would probably look a bit more dead at this moment. <laughs> yeah, I might have a different answer. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. rare, I think, for people to come off a of Kickstarter and be like, that was pretty easy. Like, no one else has ever thought that. But I guess <laughs> if you got a good partner, yeah, it all works out. And plus, you have Tim Schafer in the pitch video to really help you along the way. How did that whole thing come yeah. about? Um, I mean, we we sent him, like, we, we've been kind of friends for a while. We'd run into each other at, at Game Strings, and I, we just sent him the game, like, hey, check this out. We're working on this. At some stage, we had, like, a print-and-play test run that we sent to, to game designer friends, and we got this big email back with feedback, and he was like, yeah, this game is really great. So, jokingly, uh, we mentioned, like, hey, if we ever do a Kickstarter for this, you want to be in the video, right? He was like, yeah, sure. And two years later, it's like, hey, remember when we talked about dust spiders in that video? Re remember? And he was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then finally, we got to the moment and we emailed Tim Schaefer, like, hey, do you want to be in this video? And he was like, yeah, sure. Uh, I have like a, a 73 Barracuda sitting in my garage. It's broken, but I'll, I'll make something cool. Or I don't know if that year is correct, but um, <laughs> that's just like some incredible generosity, I think, uh, of him, you know, liking the game and wanting to help us out. And you know, if I'm I'm ever at that point in my career and some young kids reach out to me and I have a cool car in my garage, I, I think we need to kind of pay it forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the power yeah, of we, it. Yeah, sure. It, it really goes a long way. We offered to make Tim a Psychonauts 2 trailer, but he never got back to us. Oh, Tim, <laughs> come on, man. Uh, yeah, so I'm curious, like, it, you know, relatively stress-free project overall but were each of you kind of trying to pull the game in different directions what were each of you bringing was there any element of you know trying to make it a little more complicated or just basically what are the three of you bringing and was it different at all for what you what you were going in with um well terry definitely brought the art right um i'd say that's a skill set jw and i are lacking um and he's done an absolutely amazing job you know it's the, the perfect person to uh, to like really bring the cards to life. So super happy with that. Um, mm. Yeah, and then I feel like JW and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we've been mostly on like the same page design-wise. Like I don't feel like we had very many major like disagreements or like issues to resolve, like, you know, ma mainly just like small minutia of like card text and details like that. Mm. Um, yeah, I think not having that lens really helped. So whenever there was a disagreement, like there was no pressure behind it. So it's just like, okay, Robbie, I'll give you this one, but I'll get the next one, you know? So, <laughs> so just like little card rules and things. But in the end for this game, I, I think we, we designed like loads and loads more cards and we just scrapped everything that wasn't fun. And 
we always had that spirit of, of the minimalism to come back to. So like right. if something yeah. didn't work and if one of us was like, okay, we really, you know, this doesn't work, we, we would take it out because in the end you have this like kind of concentrated greatness with only the best few bits remaining of like this big ugly prototype. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. some of the, the weirdest card ideas, the worst card ideas that were rejected? Oh, <laughs> we have a, we have a huge, a huge list of rejected card ideas. And that's like the, the great thing about making a card game is you can just r- literally write down like your dumbest idea on a piece of paper and test it. And like five minutes later, you know, it was terrible. Um, yeah. So yeah, we, we really tried like, tons of variations of different things we, um, we had some some really good ones that were hard to cut to like we we made yeah. a, a bomb truck was in the game for a while and it, it was just a car that did nothing but if it got destroyed it also destroyed the two cards in Ooh, front of it that's very good um it was super fun but then we were playing some games and uh, the way the game works is you have to start set up where where each player has four cards and the player who's in the front um kind of is safer because the card at the back is, is destroyed each turn, but the players at the back begins. Um, if you begin with a bomb truck and you can destroy it, that means you kill two of your opponent's cards, and that's just one of your three actions. So if you use the other two, you can right. practically win the game in in a, on the starting turn just by yeah. a lucky start. And we love the bomb truck, but in the end, you know, stuff like that is too broken. So solution was just to to take it out. Like like lots of lots of decisions like that over the of course with the, the design yeah for the for the final cards that you ship with then with other examples of maybe dialing things down or changing the wording like how did you find where the final game was maybe broken like even if we're playing it for so long <laughs> there's still part of me that's like i feel like i should be able to break this game it has so many big swings there has to be some place i can push it to win every time but do you remember any fine tuning late in the day just to try and minimize any potential breakage happening here we, we did a lot of playtests. I think we mostly just got rid of any cards that were too powerful. Um, and we definitely like favored things that were interesting and kind of contextual because every card has its like position in the convoy. Um, we tried to make cards that were powerful, also only be powerful in the right context. Um, so things things don't get out of hand because the the strong cards are never like quite where you need them to be. Yeah, right. and, and we always went with the philosophy like when something was ambiguous to players like, hey, can I do this? It's kind of like, okay, whatever is the coolest, that is the final, you know, design. Um, and in the end, there was a lot of like really small details like should this say move any card to the front or move any other card to the front? Like this one word differences. Right. Um, I think Robbie, you know, being kind of a, your first language being English, you were like our, our language expert. So that was nice not to worry about like, hey, Robbie, how do we, how do we write this nice? You know, <laughs> that was kind of the, the approach. Yeah, I, this is maybe a, a weird connection, but when I first started playing it, it felt like a, I don't know, like Diablo 3 in a way of like every move seems so stupid overpowered. Every card seems like this is ridiculously overpowered, but then you're leveling up everything and evening out to that level of like, well, if every card's overpowered, then none of them are. Because you look at any one of those cards, like, this is just a slam dunk. This is stupid. And I think it's a beautiful lesson in design. I don't know if that was a conscious thought. I guess, I guess it was, just to make everything as ridiculous as possible. Yeah, if a card does something boring, then why should it be in the game, right? right. Like, we really wanted that Mad Max feeling of every turn should feel like a, a shot out of Fury Road, right? Like, okay, I'm using this to move the sniper to the back, and the sniper takes out your horse, and then, you know, something else happens, and a new car joins, and then, okay, it's your turn, right? Like, you can almost um, imagine the, the turn as a movie, I think, quite easily, uh Dust Spiders, and, and that has been something that we noticed kind of early that we really loved about it. So we tried to encourage that, right? Like, all the card abilities are, are kind of a bit over the top, but also you only have three actions, and if only you had four, you know? that That's kind of the feeling we were going for. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just to add to that, we also, you know, as well as cutting the overpowered cards, I think we especially wanted to cut any card that was like boring or you know if we played a couple games in a row and like never felt the desire to like play this card you know it was always left behind in your hand then we just cut it from the game completely 
That's very smart. Uh, since you brought up the Mad Max thing, uh, <laughs> I was always interested, like, how much are you leaning into it? Can we say it's Mad Max inspired, but not a Mad <laughs> Max game? Did you ever think about trying to go for the license? I mean, it seems like everybody's cool with licenses these days, right? Is that ever an interest of yours? No, uh, so I, I think, like, obviously, it is a big inspiration in that it's about cars who destroy each other. But, but you know, we wanted to make our own thing. And, and with Terry's art, it definitely has its own unique flavor. I think it is kind of very different. And, and towards the end of the development, we also started to get this really strong feeling of we don't necessarily want it to be post-apocalyptic. Like, sure, it's about murder cars, right. but, you know, these people should be having a blast. So we kind of went <laughs> for this vibe of, like, okay, there's the outskirts of civilization where people voluntarily, you know, come with their kick vehicles and kind of uh, destroy the hell out of each other. And um, it, feels, it feels like we landed in a, in a nice spot with that. I don't know. And I, if you have to fit to, like, an existing IP... Um, I don't know. I think it, it would get stressful. It would get limiting. And then now we just have this beautiful, weird little game that has a kind of very clear inspiration, but also, you know, it, it's definitely more of its own thing. Right. And when Netflix buys the rights to the Dustbiters TV series, that's going to be huge in its own way, you know? Yeah, it would be it'd be pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Specifics on these cards. Uh there is one card in this game that infuriates me, and I'd imagine it was a, it was a big <laughs> one for debating, but it seems like my fiance always gets it, and it's just like her thing. If I get this card, I refuse to use it, because I think it sucks so bad. The jammer. <laughs> was there a big debate about the jammer, about just the whole idea is this card like nullifies the powers on either side of it, and it, it is incredibly powerful, but it's also just like, here's buzz kill the card, and let's just <laughs> let it slide around the board for a while. <laughs> what were the discussions like around that? Freaking card. Um, we, we had a couple of kind of bad versions of the jammer at first. Like we had one where you couldn't destroy the cards next to it, one Ooh, where the cards okay. next to it couldn't move. And then we realized, well, if it just nullifies them, what, what makes it fun is that it can be used against you, right? Like your car is next to it and you can't use it and you just move it and now your opponent's car is next to it. Right. And it is one of those things that kind of encouraged the... Um, and then the swapping of, of who's on top. Um, I think that is something that happens a lot in the spiders. I don't know, Robbie. Do you have any strong jammer? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think I think the jammer is good, like you mentioned, just because um, it is very like uh, position dependent, um, and because the board changes so much in dust spiders, the jammer also like. You know, it, it causes other reactions, like you destroy one card and then it all shifts up and then what you were planning, you suddenly realize is now jammed. You know, it has those kind of like knock on effects. And yeah, it just encourages you to move things around. Um, and yeah, I like I like in general the cards that, uh, you know, like the ice cream truck, for example, that's right. Sort of, or the mimic that sort of, if, you know, both players have a chance to affect how it works. And, um, you know, the player that belongs to has like, a slight advantage because they can move it themselves, but in some ways it's like more of a neutral card. Right, right. Yeah, do you all have any favorite combos? Any favorite one-two punches here that Ooh. are kind of unsung heroes? There are some some ridiculous moves you can do with the, the mind manipulator right. and the hijacker. Like, I think there's some complicated move where you can like I use the hijacker and then mind manipulate it and you get it back and then you basically steal. I don't know exactly how it works, but you can Ooh. like steal an opponent's card straight up and then get the hijacker back. There's some, yeah. some good stuff there. The, I didn't even thought the of that. The hijacker is a is a classic one to combo of um, using the hijacker to take an opponent's car and then immediately destroying the hijacker so they, they can't take it back. Is a probably accounts of like 90% of the uses of the hijacker gets destroyed immediately <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. yeah. I, I love the sniper personally as well. Like, it's if it's in the back, you can destroy any car. Um, but it's so hard to get that set up. So whenever I have a sniper, I'm just, like, hyper-focusing that game just to get my sniper in the back. And it almost never, like, I almost never am able to line it up. But it's just, like, the idea of getting it right feels so good to me. I yeah. Know, I, I, I get obsessed about the sniper. Yeah. 
I love the, it. The, the sniper cloning van combo is also that's that's like oh, the yeah. real dream. If you right. could use it twice, but right. you kill. probably won't ever. <laughs> yeah, it's rare to actually limit it up. I'm curious, just I, I know, you know, we haven't even officially launched this thing yet, but do you have thoughts just on your interactions with kind of the, the tabletop industry so far, the community, the press, and how it compares to the video game industry? Everybody has been really supportive, like like at least on the Kickstarter side, right? Yeah. Which is what where we are at now. Um, it's been kind of amazing and mind blowing how well everything went down and how smoothly and how you know, like we managed to ship it on, on time and, and people are friendly and patient. I but I don't know necessarily. Like I right now we are I think all kind of waiting for what do people think you know like people to start playing it more and more and kind of hearing hearing their thoughts on on the game um but the the experience has been really lovely so far i think yeah i would agree with that um i don't really feel like we're exactly in the board games industry right um i feel like uh one thing we wanted was to not start a board games company and like try figure out how to like do business in this space. Um, and because it was always a side project and, you know, we're already making video games full time. Um, and I am eight, bit has certainly helped us a lot with that. Um, you know, and Tinsley as well, um, helping with our PR and things. Um, and I think it's, it's been new for, for Tinsley and I am 8-bit as well. I think they're more kind of used to the video game space, but mm. um, yeah, it's it, it's been great. So It's been a really nice learning process, I think. You know, like we've learned so much and uh, so many little interesting things to kind of dig into and find out. And because we had the time and we took five years, right, it was just like, okay, you know, we have to do, you know, a Kickstarter. How does this work? And then we would just spend a few months reading up on it slowly and figuring out how to approach it and prepare, you know, update posts and stuff. Uh, it, it was really interesting and, and really cool. And, you know, but but like Robbie said, we didn't want to start a company. It took us five years to get this one done. So, you know, who knows? In, in another five years, there will be, be another board game. Like, it was a really fun thing. But these, I, I don't think we, we have you know, or ideas lying around or anything. We probably need to make a, another dozen really bad tabletop games before we hit a good idea again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if this thing blows up in a good way, I mean, are you interested in supporting it, expansions, that whole thing? Do you think you could really shift your plans if this thing takes off or is it just going to be yeah, a nice perk? I, I don't know. Like, at the moment, I think we have this really... It's feeling like Dustbite is a kind of a done game. We it only has twenty one cards, and that is kind of its strength in a way. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. We you n never know where where things go, right? Like it was fun to w make. I'm sure we can you know come up with another hundred card ideas and scrap ninety nine <laughs> of them, and there will be one more cool card to add to the <laughs> game. Uh, but I, I I have no idea. Yeah, I feel like it would be really hard to expand dust spiders itself booster um, bags <laughs> i mean that's interesting i think people playing i mean you, you all know a thousand times better than we do but i think people playing it's like oh this seems like a piece of cake for expansions this seems tailor-made for it add four new cards i would absolutely buy that i think a lot of people would have been playing this game for a while hmm. <laughs> <laughs> selling things you say oh, we we have a lot of uh cards in the trash pile we could we could dig up again interesting interesting director's cut yeah, <laughs> yeah. bloopers we can do a blooper yeah, yeah. it's the more worst, of a blooper, worst blooper reel than a director's cut <laughs> worst 10 cards that would be super fun uh yeah do you have advice for other video game designers that might be interested in dabbling in tabletop design um well I, I, honestly i think if they are into it they're already doing it all you need is pen and paper and right some maybe some scissors if you want to do it nicely um but uh yeah it, it's really fun and i think the most important thing for us was that we took our time to just kind of slowly do our research and kind of don't just jump into it but make sure that you understand what you're doing next like with regards to production or crowdfunding or whatever or designing like 
do a lot of play tests, send the game to friends. And it, for me, it was kind of surprising, like how receptive all of our friends were like, oh yeah, sure, I'll try try your card game. You know, it was really nice to get lots of feedback and um, yeah, but, but honestly, I, I would say recommend it to anyone, like just as a side fun thing, like if you have a cool idea and it's simple, especially if it only takes 15 minutes to learn, people are definitely Perfect. willing to, to help you out. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say even if you aren't like designing video games already, if you're interested in games at all, or if you have an idea, like, especially a card game is super simple to try, right? It's, it, there's really like very low barrier to entry in terms of like, you know, making a board game um, that you can test with your friends. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's definitely like a fun and easy way to like get started doing game design. Do you? Yeah, think, absolutely. Do you think that you know? I, I know that influenced your your video game history with design has influenced tabletop design. But do you think it's going to go back the other way? Do you think like having the speed of these iterations and stuff has influence the way you're going to design video games in the future? Do you think you'll do more paper testing or anything like that? I have to, I have to think about that yeah. for, for a minute. Yeah, I, I honestly, it has been really kind of, uh, I don't know how to say this without sounding a bit like I'm, I'm bragging, but uh, <laughs> this whole process to me has kind of shown like, wow, if you take your time, you can learn a lot and you can get you can do something that you never thought you could. It was really kind of encouraging, right? This whole process has just so far, uh, you know, has gone incredibly well. Uh, and that has been really cool to see and encouraging. And I think, you know, it might uh, be a bit like a confidence boost to try kind of stranger things maybe or, or more ambitious things like, okay, you know, it wasn't necessarily uh, impossibly difficult. It was just, work uh, which was cool to see yeah i think from from my side there's definitely like some design takeaway like i mean anytime you're practicing game design you're going to improve i hope um but there are some some things that i feel are really well designed about dust spiders and really elegant that i would you know like to incorporate in like other video games and maybe like you know, makes make things that are a bit simpler and a bit more focused, you know, is something that I think turned out really well in Dust Biters and is totally a a design philosophy that could apply a lot more to a lot more video games as well. Yeah, yeah. Can you all compare like the sense of pride you have in Dust Biters versus the games you've worked on? Where does that stack in your gameography at this point? Um, I, that's like uh, choosing between children. Yeah, uh, you have to. Everybody of, has I'm their proud favorite. Proud of all the games I've I've made, but yeah, Dust Spiders is definitely up there. It's you know I'm uh, I really like it. Um, yeah, and I think it, it's turned out super well, and yeah, very very happy to have made it with such a cool team of people as well. Yeah. Yeah, de definitely top 10 games have worked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, <laughs> ringing endorsement. You got it. <laughs> Sweet. Well, it's, de it's, de it's definitely in the top three card games I've put on Kickstarter. <laughs> it is, yeah, I, I think so too. No, and it, I think it's also kind of hard to compare for me because it was such a, a stress free project. Right. So, kind of, it went so nicely that, and, and slowly without real deadlines and stuff that I find it hard um, to, to look at it as work in a way. It really felt just yeah. like. It honestly really felt like a, a really healthy, fun side project. So it just feels different to me. But we'll see, right? Like maybe people get it in the mail uh, very soon and they'll be like, oh, wow, why did I back this? This is the worst game. I'm going to use Not it as toilet happen. paper. Not like you happen. don't know. So after that, ask again. <laughs> All right, that seems fair. Well, hey, uh, thanks again. Uh, thanks the entire team for getting this thing together. It's It's been a lot of fun. We're going to be playing it for years. Like the cards are already worn down and covered in beer and stuff, and it's only going to get worse. I'm looking forward to seeing these things degrade. Uh, but anything else you all want to say? Anything else? Any other stories from your time that you haven't shared yet? I just want to highlight uh, that, you know, Barry is super awesome, and yeah. that he would say even smarter things than us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sad he can't be here. But yeah, thank you so much for, for playing and for wanting to chat with us about it. 
Yeah, my pleasure. Robbie, any final thoughts? Well, I think uh, we covered it all. You've heard all the stories. You know, we 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 thank Terry. That's about it. Yeah, sweet. Check me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, best of luck on the on the big right. launch here, guys. Really appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, and thank you so much for watching or listening to this interview from MinMax. You can check out a whole lot more in the playlist. And always, you're welcome to give us a subscribe on YouTube. We'd appreciate it. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. You can help support independent games media by subscribing to MinMax on YouTube here, or you can support us over on Patreon to unlock exclusive shows like MinMax Council. You can call into our podcast. You can put a picture of your choice on every MinMax video, or you could have us plug your passion project on the MinMax Show podcast. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better, and we exist because of you. Any help telling a friend is appreciated.